Oh. I forgot to turn the hot plate on. Oh. It's been like that all day. Anyway, welcome back to the shop. This is Russ. Uh, talking about my power, my portable power, and in particular my power unit, and where I think I'm going to take this whole portable power series, and where we're going to go with it to a certain extent. And that can change depending on what you ideas you come up with, or what other ideas I come up with as we go along. But you're going to see this thing really does kind of spread out in what I'm doing here. The unit itself that has uh, two batteries for 70 amp hours. I have a uh, inverter on there so I can get 110 and 5 volts out of it and it has a battery charger on there so I can recharge the batteries while the power is on or twinkle charger to keep maintain a charge on it over long periods and I don't have to think about it but it's ready to go when it needs to be so it's a good setup but I've kind of learned some things from doing this and reading about it and watching YouTube about different aspects of this and my first and a couple of things that I've decided I don't really have to have that battery charger on the card itself other than it's convenient that that unit is all self-contained. That's similar to what you can buy out there already when you think about it. And you can buy them in different uh, ratings of battery storage and wattage that they output. But a lot of those things, they're 200 300 and up. And they get over $1,000 pretty fast if you want much power out of it. But it's all self-contained into one unit. That if one piece of it goes bad, or if you want to upgrade a certain aspect of that, you can't really do it because it's all self-contained. That's what I figured out about that unit there. Everything is self-contained, and it doesn't really have to be. So I'm going to break out my system of uh, power, portable power. Is I'm going to break it off into three different categories. And... I think you'll find that this actually might not be a bad thing to do. So what I want to do is that first you have your collection and that's the, how you're going to pull in power. The second one is storage. How are you going to store that power? Like now those 270 amp batteries, uh, excuse me, those two 35 amp batteries for 70 amp power pack uh, is one example of that storage. And the third thing is the usage. How are you going to put it out? Um, I, as I was um, I noticed that about those two, I put two different inverters on it with doing it. And I found that one inverter does a better job than the other inverter for how much power it drains down to before it shuts down. The 400 watt one actually didn't shut off until 10.3 volts, whereas the other one shut off uh, at... 11.8 so actually the 400 watt inverter that power pack system with the same load doing both of those inverters the 400 watt inverter actually lasted longer and i think the main reason why i did that is that both of these are designed to just hook up to a car battery type thing and use it and i think they have a built-in uh shut off on it that won't let you go below a certain number of volts and then it shuts it down so that you don't run your battery completely out. And I, there probably are inverters out there to let you go low and still be able to in, convert that power so you can get more out of the batteries. So I want to take a look at that. And once I figure that all out, um, I'll let you know what I've kind of learned as we go along. And you may already know. And if you do and you want to let me know, I would appreciate it. At least put me on the right path to figure it out. But the unit does work well. I get seven or eight hours out of it the way I now have it designed. And it's pretty well self-contained. But once I break it out into these three categories, I think things will go a little bit better. For example, on the collection side, what is that exactly? I want to find a permanent location. And I think I'm leaning toward putting it in a closet in the house instead of in my garage to keep the batteries warm even when there's no power because I'll always keep it warm in the house when there's no power. We may not do that in the shop. So be a better place to have my battery storage and recharging point. I'll just find a closet on an outside wall and I'll put my solar panels out there eventually that will help maintain and recharge. So there, what I was really getting at on my collection is that there are several ways you can then collect. And you want to use multiple ideas of how to collect the energy. So that when you don't have power, you want to be able to replenish. So you can replenish it by using a 110 charger. That will charge your batteries back up. You can use solar, but that only works during the day. A generator, gas, a gas generator, that 
that works real well. But again, like my idea is you turn it on and off. Don't let it run constantly. That way it doesn't, uh, you can afford to use it, especially on long term. Uh, you can jump it right off the vehicle. If I wanted to charge this system up as it is now, I could take jumper cables and hook it up to it and hook it up to my car, start the car and let it charge up for an hour. And those batteries will charge up. Uh, and we're going to talk about a little more of that in detail when we talk about storage. Um, so, but you have all these different options and you could do rain, um, excuse me, wind also so that the wind would give you your power source when it's running. So if you multi-layer what your collection is, bring it all into one place and then work out how you get that power from that into your battery packs. The second stage is, is the storage. And rather than having one big bank of batteries and everybody has to draw off that one bank together so it runs out together, I want to break my system up into, into power packs. And there's two advantages to that, I think, is what I'll find. First off, if I'm charging up a 300 amp battery, that's going to take a heck of a lot longer than it is for me to charge up my 35 amp batteries. So I can charge that system, that set up there, in about an hour or so with my battery charger and if I had a full 300 amp battery that would take quite a bit longer so the key here is I have two 70 amp power power packs eventually I can rotate them back and forth be charging one while I'm using the other and go back and forth because I can charge it back up to full speed in the same length of time before I use up this power if I'm not using too much power so if I have to have 70 amps to go eight hours and I can recharge this on my car in a couple hours, let's say, then I can get that overlap so I can keep rotating them and keep it charged so I can go for an indefinite amount of time that I need to before I get power back. Um, if it's during the day, I can also use the solar power to help recharge things back up and switch them out uh, type of thing. Keep one during the day and one in the evening. Uh, the main thing I want this power for is to run my computer. As far as the light and any fans, I've decided I'm gonna use my Ryobi battery system for that. That'll be cheap enough, I always keep them charged up and they'll last for a long time to run these two pieces of equipment. So I'll depend on those two, uh, on my Ryobi to run those two aspects of no power. And I'll leave the other port of power to be able to run my computer that is the main thing and be able to connect to the internet and that sort of thing so that's the main purpose of this secondary power portable power unit that i have so i'm going to set up my battery storage so that it can be hooked up uh, with alligator clips some kind of clip-ons where i can take these battery packs and set them in there and then I hook it up and it automatically starts charging from whatever I'm getting my power. If it's from the wall outlet, fine. If, it, if the electricity's down and I'm pulling it in from solar, it'll help charge that battery when I hook it up. Um, and I should be able to hook all these different power packs into us and let them all charge up to the 12 volts. And then it'll shut down. Now, as far as distributing that, uh, you really want your power as you're in your usage, um, you want them to take these power packs. So like, let's say for example, you want to take two of them and gang them together to give you more amperage that you're putting out. You, you should keep that matched. So in other words, I should use both my 70 amp hour uh, power, back, power packs, put them together in parallel, and then I would have um, 140 amp hours of power from those four batteries, but I don't want to take a smaller power pack, like I'm also going to develop a 24 amp hour power pack. And I don't want to gang that up with my 70 amp system because I think the drain gets a little bit weird and how it drains one versus the other and that you actually don't really, you have a less a capable distribution of what you have and it's not going to be as efficient. I don't know that for sure, Mixing power packs and ganging them up to give you more amperage. Uh, I'm not sure how that's going to work out till I do some of my own world war, my own real world testing. So you have to stay tuned for that. 
but I plan on having two 70 amp power packs eventually so I can rotate them in and out, charge one and use the other to keep the computer going perpetually. Uh, I also want to make a 24 amp hour uh, power pack and right now I'm leaning toward the idea of using something similar to a motorcycle battery size. Something that has about seven or eight amp hours in it. And then if I can gain three of them up together, the weight should still be minimized, but I'll be, I can get maybe 24 amp hours. And I can use that for temporary power, like if I want to take it out for the day and be able to have power if I'm out in the woods somewhere and I want radio and my phone or TV or whatever I want to take with me, I'll be able to run a minimum amount on that if it runs on like the 5 volt system. So... A 24 amp one would be handy. I also want to get an 8 amp one and try that for a while and see how, in the real world, how practical that is to be useful. And they all will charge off the same collection system because everything will be based on 12 volts. So, and I'll also have a charging system for my Ryobi batteries off of that same collection system so that I can plug all my Ryobi batteries and charge them up uh, on their own so that I can keep maintain all my batteries on the collection system and then my storage system I can gang them together to get more amp hours if I need to for something in particular or I can rotate them to keep them all charged up and that's the idea behind splitting it up so then we talk about the usage the distributing of this power after you got it stored so I've got to build probably uh, first off I have two inverters now and I'm probably going to get a, a smaller one so that I can take something really small and like take um, the 8 amp hour one, we'll probably use that really small 150 watt one and that should be enough to run something, some small piece of electronic equipment that doesn't run on batteries. I can just take it and use it on that or run it out and run something for five minutes out by the fence rather than carrying a cord out there. So I think the three of these that will work out, I gotta have some kind of carrying system for that I'll have to develop for each of these power packs and I think three sizes is what I'm kind of shooting for for my storage and then I have to have their own particular way of of dollying them moving them around uh, depending on how much weight they are whether it be on wheels or just with a handle to carry it easily and then, so I have to develop all of these different pieces eventually to be able to have a pretty good system that is flexible that I can use for temporary power or for emergency power whatever comes up um, that's my basic system. If I went too fast for you, ask questions. If I have to, I'll do a follow-up and kind of go more in detail about some of this. But it's pretty, uh, I think it's going to be different than anything you've ever seen out there. Because everybody always talks about one bank, put everything into one, to, one thing. But if you can't keep the power going on that, because you have to have so much power collection, that increases what you have to have for collection when you have bigger power You. Uh, pack and you're bigger the bigger the bank of batteries are the more collection you're going to have to have in order to keep maintaining that system whereas if you'd break that out into small power packs and they all charge off of this i think then you can either use these power packs to join them together or individually to still do things that you want to do around the house or out and about so that's the whole thing in a nutshell uh I have to tell you, I, this is my second attempt at making this video, and the last one was 26 minutes long, so I guess I ain't doing bad, or I just flat forgot to tell you about something in here. If you don't figure something out, don't understand where we're going with this, or you want to talk about it, or have ideas, that's what the comments are for. I always appreciate it. So, if you learned something here, or if you like this video, please say so. That tells me that we're kind of on the right track. Most importantly, though, come back again because I'm nowhere near done as you can tell thanks and we'll see you again very soon